In a world filled with dead people, everything becomes scarce. Food, ammo, schizophrenia pills. To survive you have to fight. You have to kill or be killed. And then killed again. It's a cruel world we live in. And every bullet, every second, every person counts. Dead Light's story happens between Dying Light 1 and Dying Light 1.5. We play as John Deadlight, creator of iconic quotes like Every dead has its light. The dead killed my light and it's lighting time. Throughout the story we meet various characters but because the action happens in Seattle we don't meet any of the characters from the original game. The game features a small array of weapons where throughout the game you will mainly use revolver and axe but later down the line you will unlock pump shotgun. The combat is satisfying but the most important gameplay mechanic is parkour. Since the game is in 2D, the devs had to scrap most of the advanced parkour moves, but despite that they got inspired by mobile game Vector and make the parkour mechanic alike. Devs invested majority of the budget to hire one of the most talented story writers to create a masterpiece. But eventually, when the game was about to come out, they fired 90% of writers and basically had to rewrite the entire story in two weeks. But despite that and that they scrapped 80% of the game, they promised the game still had its core mechanics, which are great parkour system and semi-satisfying combat. But enough about gameplay, I'm here to tell you the story of John Deadlight, that is emotional, heartbreaking and revenge ridden. The game starts with a cutscene where John, in the fit of schizophrenia and rhythm and rage, killed his girlfriend. <laughs> Not knowing what just happened, he decided to move forward to look for supplies. Since you can't get any pills anywhere nowadays, John has to learn to live with his condition. When he wakes up in the sewers, he finds out that his girlfriend is absent. He decides to look for her. He travels to broken Seattle through the rainy storm and ocean of the dead. He swears to find the killer of his girlfriend. Eventually he finds revolver and his condition starts to act out again. His brain tells him he's camping with his old friend and learning how to shoot. When he woke up he realized it wasn't real and not only he made a lot of noise, he wasted bullets. Each time he passes out his condition is getting worse destroying his brain and thinking processes. When he arrived to the hotel, he started to fool around, not knowing where to go next. After a couple of tries, he eventually figured out how to get out of this hotel and move on. But because he made a lot of noise before, there was a horde coming to the hotel. John had to use his parkour skills to get to the other side of the street. With hold on the back and zero bullets, he runs into pound shop, as it is famous of containing lots of ammunition. John meets another survivor there. He's badly wounded and can't move. After his sudden death, John robs him, securing all the bullets for himself. When he was about to escape the horde, some old guy dragged him into the sewers, but John unexpectedly hits his head and dozes off. In his dream, he started running, but all of a sudden the nuclear bomb explodes. He tries to outrun it, but no one can. Could it be that John can see into the future? Will Seattle survive the nuclear explosion? We don't know, because John wakes up. After being dragged and stripped of all his weapons, he's his old hobo. There are lots of things he could do to John while he was asleep, but he shakes this thought as he has to still look for the killer. The hobo tells John that he can only escape if he does all the challenges he prepared for him. John agrees as he has nothing better to do. After completing all the trials, Hobo tells John that he lost his son. Despite that, Hobo doesn't even give John his weapons back. John agrees to look for his son anyway. Hobo gives John a mere slingshot and sets him off. It's another day in paradise. This time it's sunny. After climbing the cables, John finds an old treehouse where he gets another schizophrenic attack. But this one was shot. Could it be that Hobo gave him some medicine? After running for a while, John reminds himself that he can drive and quickly finds a random van. But it was all in his head. He can't drive for shit and flip the car in seconds. This time Sewer Hobo won't help him, but because John has invested his points into luck, he finds a ladder to climb on. When he arrives to the top, Hobo's son helps him to get on the roof. But despite luck 10 stats, the military chopper flies over them and starts shooting. The big chase sequence starts where despite the fact that the chopper belongs to the military, they can't hit any target. 
When John decides to stand in one spot, he realizes that the chopper is just his imagination acting out, and it doesn't even exist. When he looks around, he can't find the kid, so now the mission is to find the kid and get him to safety. Again. But despite that the chopper is imaginary, John is still scared of it. Eventually he reminds himself that it's dying light, so he jumps into the trash to cushion his fall. He overhears one of the guys in the chopper saying, He jumped to the bags of rusty knives we left there. It's over for him. And they left him alone. Hobo's son appears out of nowhere telling John that he wants to go home. They had to cross the park but in the middle of doing so, John's head started to ache with piercing pain. He sees his daughter but decides to ignore that. He remembers that he was following Hobo's son and jumps into action to help him. The son blames him for not sticking to him and wandering off. Eventually they reach the sewers and Hobo tells John where Kira might be. He's in the stadium, where military made their outpost. John rushes out of the sewers without a word and runs to the stadium. Inside he finds a fully loaded shotgun and a bunch of ammunition for it. He doesn't care anymore about not killing and saving bullets. He slaughters his way into the stadium, where he finds another survivor hanging around there. He helps him and they both run to the chopper. But the guy is wounded and can't fly. He tells John to look for medkit in the hospital. While in the hospital, John kills a lot of zombies and eventually finds a medium healing potion. While escaping he destroys the hut but it was too big for him and eventually he has to run away. After giving potion to the guy they fly away but after a couple of seconds the guy starts to cough and eventually remembers that there is no such thing as healing potion and John gave him contaminated syrup. Another trick John's mind plays on him. The guy dies and they crash. John wakes up in his dream. Everything is red. His mind remembers that this is his house where everything happened. But it doesn't let him discover the truth yet. When he wakes up for real this time, he's not even scratched from the crash. He runs to the streets but gets ambushed by the military. They command him to drop his weapons but at this point he doesn't know what's real or not. He wakes up in giant military station. Despite that they gave him food and shelter he decides to escape anyway. While doing so, he notices that there is a girl being dragged into one of the rooms. He decides to help her. With boiling blood, John rushes into action and kills the military guys. After that, he has a plan to disable their power and destroy the station and get away. After doing so, the entire station turned into hell and the military guys were focused on fighting off the dead. John and the girl run away to the pier, but it's closed. As the girl screams, hold approaching, John has his last vision. He runs into his house while fighting off zombies. After reaching the bedroom, he can't open the door. He destroys the lock with his shotgun and barricades it with a shelf. He counts the ammo and has only last two shelves. Suddenly he sees two zombies inside the room and he decides to shoot them on sight. He realizes that it was his girlfriend and daughter. He was the one who killed them. All this search for nothing. It was him all along. After that, his mind lets him snap back to reality. He quickly breaks the floor so the girl can escape. After that, he didn't even want to continue on living. He found the killer. Now he has to do what he swore to do. He's ready. <laughs>